Welcome back to the Blue Post Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Fusco. This is a series of special episodes that will be focusing on mobility and wellness month. So we're going to be relating everything back to mental and physical health. So in that spirit today, I'm very excited to have Albert Layton from Mississauga Physio as our guest. Albert, thank you very much for joining. First of all, how are you today? I'm good. Thanks for having me on, Anthony. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. And uh, let's just dive right in. So uh, how can people get to know you? So what does Albert Layden do? Uh, right now, I'm uh, currently managing, as you mentioned, the uh, Mississauga Physio and Orthopedic Center. Uh, we are comprised of, uh, I guess, three different components here. Uh, we have a group of uh, local orthopedic surgeons, I uh, have a small rheumatology department and a small uh, general practitioner with some uh, athletic therapy or athletic uh, medicine background um, that comprises of about half of what we do here. Um, they run their clinics uh, here on a daily basis. So they do their surgeries out of some of the local hospitals here with the Trillium Health Foundation. Uh, the other side of what we have here right now is the uh, the rehab, and uh, that comprises right now of about uh, five physiotherapists, uh, a couple massage therapists, uh, we have a couple athletic therapists as well, so we're starting to become a more well-rounded uh, organization, and we're also affiliated with a uh, an orthability group here that does custom bracing, so my job, I guess, right now is to sort of uh, orchestrate it all together and make sure everybody is uh, running uh, happily. No, that's fantastic. And it sounds like you're going to be basically very busy every day. So what's a normal nine to five look like for you? Ah, a normal nine to five. Uh, <laughs> Maybe there, there isn't is there a normal nine to five. It's kind of, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, kind of like your, uh, your hockey team there. It's a, uh, it's an interesting day. I mean, you plan a nine to five and, and t- things tend to come up, but no, uh, a normal nine to five here would be uh, just coming in initially, making sure the operations are running uh, smoothly. By the time I get in, uh, the phones are buzzing on a regular basis. Our, our doctors, of course, uh, have uh, scheduled appointments. I want to make sure that they're moving, uh, moving along appropriately. People are getting seen appropriately, uh, making sure that the, uh, the resources are in place that we put in there for both our physios, our doctors, and our bracing shop. Uh, and, and I guess really just uh, fine-tuning some of the day-to-day procedures, just making sure that uh, if there are any glitches in some of our uh, programs, our software, our platforms, uh, I guess it's it's my role to make sure that these things are moving in a better uh, light. Um, things change from time to time, but for the most part, I'm also looking at uh, you know how do we how do we increase our exposure as well as how do we make things better. So that's sort of part of my day to day nine to five, if you will. No, that's fantastic, and uh, I want to go over one thing that you said is talking about exposure and making things better. Uh, what kind of things fall under that umbrella for you? Um, when you're talking about exposure, I mean, again, trying, trying to get our name out there with different groups, uh, uh, different local affiliations, uh, different, uh, uh, different connections that we're making on a regular basis, uh, much the same as that we've, we've uh, over the last couple of years, we've been involved, of course, with the Beast. We've been involved with the, uh, a lot of uh, local sports teams, some of the local uh, minor uh, soccer, hockey, uh, some of the baseball programs. And, and we're getting out there to, to, for people to know who we are, but also we've we've offered not just the the uh, exposure that goes along with with uh, marketing uh, resources and funds, but also in the cases where we're offering some staff to be at certain events. Uh, I think that's important. I mean, it's it's a lot to give back with with some uh, funding to some of these minor programs, but I think a lot of that that we're trying to do is also give back with some of our staff being on site, uh, teaching the kids about how to stay healthy, teaching the kids about. Uh, injury prevention, and uh, even teaching some of the coaching staff of the minor programs out there about what to do if there is an injury and, and, and wh- who can you turn to. If, if it's not us, if it's somebody else, then absolutely. So we just want to make sure these things are uh, all in place. Uh, luckily, I have a good, uh, a good well-rounded uh, team here uh, comprising of uh, a lot of uh, ex-athletes, uh, some of them high caliber, some of them uh, recreational. Uh, but also, I mean, what we're trying to do is, is really just try to give back to that group and, uh, uh, you know, get, get, the, get the name, get the word out there that, you know, if there are issues uh, with, with personal or with, with group programming, uh, you know, we are a bit of a one-stop shop here. We can help you with information or we can help you with uh, whatever your needs are. No, that's absolutely wonderful. And I want to touch back on a point that you made about uh, helping to promote a healthy lifestyle. So, 
Uh, can you dive into that a little bit for me? What would you, your personal bit of advice be for somebody who's looking to uh, have a more healthy lifestyle right now? Well, and I think you've probably, you know, you hear this a lot of times. Uh, I think it's important that people realize that prevention is always the key to anything. Uh, uh, from somebody who, myself personally, who's come from a bit of a, uh, a sports-minded background, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a, as a kid, uh, played lots of sports, some recreational, uh, played at some, you know, good competitive levels, uh, worked with some of the uh, different professional teams out there when it comes to hockey or pro lacrosse or dis the, the, the different things over the years. So my, my message has always been, you know, to the athletes, to the parents, to the coaches, you know, if we can prevent, if we can set something up to prevent something from occurring, it makes it all the much easier when these things do occur because people have good habits and, and so on and so forth. So uh, if we're talking about, you know, what do you do to prevent? I mean, really, um, I always say, you know, find, find something you like to do. Uh, if, if you want to stay healthy and you want to be preventative, uh, there's lots of different things out there on the market. I mean, people, you hear about the new fads that come out on a regular basis they may be short-lived uh find something that you like to do if you if you if you like to swim swim even though you may be a soccer player if you like to run run i mean maybe you're a hockey player but you know in, in these times and stuff uh, you want to make sure you're doing the things that you enjoy doing because those are the things you're going to stick with uh moderate levels of activity are always good um much is the same you probably hear anywhere uh you know good good warm-up good cool down uh, be smart about the programs in, in a lot of cases. Uh, more is not always better. So, I mean, that's generally sort of my words of wisdom, if you will, on these sort of things is that I uh, just want to make sure that people, A, are enjoying what they do. You will do better at that if you are. Oh, that's fantastic. And I'm going to keep uh, going down that road because I think Certainly. there's a lot of really interesting things that can come out of there. But I wanted to ask you personally, what does mental and physical health mean to you? Mental and physical health, uh, obviously, they, they come hand in hand together. Uh, without one, it's difficult to have the other. Um, I've known a lot of people. I've been involved in a lot of situations where uh, a, lot of, a lot of people are, are physically well-being or physically well-off and, uh, again, very good at their uh, athletic trait, if you will. Uh, but until you're able to put that sort of mental component with it, uh, you know, you have a strong mind, you're, you're comfortable, you're comfortable with the situation you're in, you're comfortable in a lot of cases with what you have to do to prepare yourself to perform physically until you get to that point, then, you know, it's very difficult to have that happy balance um, and, and vice versa. I mean, if, if you, if you have the, the knowledge to be able to, uh, to be strong minded, to be strong willed. Uh, then you understand that uh, a good healthy body is very important into maintaining that strong mental capacity. So uh, you can't do, you can't have one without the other. I really don't believe that. And I know, uh, especially in, in these times, these trying times over the last uh, probably 10, 11 months, I think uh, both our mental and uh, our physical uh, testaments are being, uh, and a lot of people are being uh, tested to the limit, if you will, because I know People are trying to get out there and maintain their physical activity. I see a lot of people out biking and walking and, and, and doing in, you know, outdoor circuit training. And I just hope that they are sort of practicing the, uh, the, the, the ideas that are needed for, for a strong mental health as well. Oh, I love that answer. And I kind of have a two-part follow-up question for you. So um, the first part of it would be, what are some things that the average, like me, I'm just the average person. What's something that I could do right when I get up, either physically or mentally, right at the start of the day uh, to put myself in a good mindset. So I'll ask you that part first. Uh, I mean, Anthony, I, I, I think you, get, you don't give yourself enough credit. I think you're an average person, I think you're, you know, for, for what you do and what you have to do, and I'm sure the days you go through, uh, you know, I'll give you a little bit more credit. You're a little better than average, I would say. <laughs> Having said much. that, uh, <laughs> you know, how do we start the day off? I mean, it, it's different for everybody. I mean, uh, I know some people that uh, like to get up and start with a bang and, and uh, you know, if, if you feel that, if you have your energy in the morning, uh, uh, if you're an early riser, uh, you know, get up and, and, and go for a brisk walk, go for a jog. Uh, it's always good to, to start the day off uh, fresh, start the day off positive though. It's, it's a nice way in a, in a lot of cases to, uh, to be able to sort of collect your thoughts. You want to plan your day out. Uh, not saying that I do it the best, but uh, I'm usually a fairly light sleeper. I'm up early. Uh, I like to hit the treadmill first thing in the morning, usually about 5.30 or 6. 
uh, treadmill for about half an hour and allows me to just to collect my thoughts and, and, and sort of reflect on the past day and, and sort of even if, if, if briefly just plan out the day to, that, that's coming, it, it allows me then to better mentally prepare for those uh, challenges that await me. Uh, my body feels a little bit more uh, revigorized and, um, you know, I feel like I can accomplish more. I, I like to do a light stretch routine. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, some of these things I'm probably your, your, your reader or sorry, your, your followers have probably heard it over and over again. You know, something, uh, something in the belly, uh, a light breakfast, if, if nothing else is, uh, is better than no breakfast. So get something, get that fire, get the fire burning, get the energy going. And to me, I, I think that's the key to getting, getting a good start on a day. It's, it's, uh, it's like running a race, uh, you know, a good start out of the blocks, uh, you know, leads to good results. Mm -hmm. And that's fantastic. And now that's going to lead into my second part of the question, which is, how would you break up the monotony of a day where you're just sitting and working from home at a desk? Like I haven't been back to the arena. I haven't been traveling obviously with COVID and everything going on. So I spend the majority of my time in my little office at a desk with my laptop. How can I break up the day and separate maybe a little bit of home and work life? Well, and, and that's, and that's routine. Uh, really having to, this is where I say, you know, if you know you're going to be, uh, if you know you got a busy day ahead, you know what? Uh, hit a treadmill, hit a bike early, early, you know, get get a good start on that. You know you're going to be sitting. Muscles were meant to sort of move and contract. Uh, for what we do on a, on a daily basis, sitting for too long of a period, even though you think, okay, I'm not doing anything physical. Why is my back aching? Why is my neck hurting? Why? What's going on here? Um, you know, put put routine into your routine. So. If, if you were to start uh, your, your regular day at 7.30 in the morning, you know what, maybe at 6.30 or so, get yourself a 15 minute brisk walk, get a quick stretch in, uh, you know, hit your job for, for an hour, two hours and, and make sure that you schedule a break in every two hours. It's very important. I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of chronic injuries and a uh, repetitive strain injuries that, that, that occur in most of us uh, uh, that, that we can avoid or, or can fix. Uh, Preferably the the avoidance and and this is where we talked earlier a little bit about the uh, prevention. So if you can give yourself a, a five to fifteen minute break every two hours, uh, get up from your chair, do a couple simple stretches, uh, squeeze the muscles together a little bit of your you know your back, uh, maybe do a couple squats, uh, get out and run an errand at lunchtime. Uh, I always try to tell people to to break it up. Uh, I like two hour segments. I just think it's good. I think you can focus on what you do. So you get your mental out of the way when it comes to making sure you accomplish some of your work tasks. And then you're also getting your, you know, five to 15 minute physical in. So if you get that done, I mean, you think about at the end of the, at, at the end of an eight hour day, you know, you've, you've got a good six to seven hours of mental focus on your work. And you're also punching, you know, a good 45 minutes of, of physical activity whether it's inside your house, whether it's outside running an errand or whatnot. So I think it's, again, like you, you alluded to earlier, I mean, you know, what's, what's the importance of the physical and the mental mm -hmm. together? No, it's, uh, it's wonderful. And actually that's gonna lead into a couple of my next questions, which is talking about uh, one, what are the types of, or most common types at least that you've seen chronic injuries? And then on the second part of that, what are some at home physical exercises that maybe people who don't have access to a gym or something along those kind of lines can do? Um, I mean, most of the most of the chronic injuries, um, again, generally it's, it's a repetitive in nature, posture related for the most part. Uh, we are, a, unfortunately, we are a sedative uh, lifestyle population uh, with the emergence of all this technology and, and especially now in the pandemic, more people like yourself, I mean, uh, it's the beauty of being able to work from home, but at the same time, it means that we're spending more time, you know, looking at a, a computer screen in front of us or, or leaned over a, uh, a keyboard or a mouse and that sort of thing. So, uh, we tend to find a lot of things that, um, uh, are, are causing issues, if you will, that generally stem from the posture, but may sort of trickle down into the, uh, the appendages, uh, a lot of tendonitis of the elbow, uh, of course, carpal tunnel. Um, people feeling that what's going on my fingers is this early arthritis in a lot of cases it's just contracture because of course we're holding our hands in different ways we we tend to have a lot more uh, neck issues and, and again for that reason and uh, if, if you were to stand up and I always give people this uh, example 
If you were to stand up, uh, look into a mirror, uh, turn to the side, uh, a good posture, or not necessarily a perfect posture, but an optimal, if you will, posture is uh, sideways looking into a mirror. If your ear, shoulder, and hip line up, then you're in a good, show, you're in a good posture. More often than none, you will find that your uh, ear and your shoulder tend to sort of push a little bit further than your hip. They roll forward a little bit, and that's where we're losing our, our posture. And that's, again, because we are looking at a computer, working on uh, a keyboard and so on, and our shoulders tend to become rounded a little bit. Uh, that would sort of lead into the answer, I guess, of the next question you have, or what, what are some things that you can do uh, for, for those people who are uh, seated behind a computer screen more now? A simple exercise that we call, uh, I've always called, it's called I's, Y's, and T's. If you can remember those three letters, very simple to remember this next exercise. And really, it's the get up away from your computer. I, I, I say get up away from your computer, but I mean, you could easily do this sitting in your chair, if you will, but it's nice just to get up and stand up. Uh, you would uh, raise your hands above your head into a, a Y position, and you're just going to squeeze your shoulder blades. You're gently, you're going to hold them for anywhere between five to 10 seconds, and you're going to relax, and you're going to repeat that five to 10 times. The, the next exercise would be a T position where your, your arms are, are extended straight out to the sides. Same thing, a gentle squeeze of the shoulder blades, five to 10 seconds, five to 10 times. And finally, you keep your arms by your side. So your hands are down towards your hips and your legs and you're in the I position, same thing. Uh, what does that do? Basically the major muscle groups in your back, uh, your trapezius and what they call your, your, your lats uh, and, and then different shoulder muscles, some, even some of your rotators, for example, uh, you're, you're activating these muscles and you're trying to uh, uh, reaffirm the posture that you need to have. You need to have a good strong back as much as you need to have a good strong front uh, by sitting in a computer, you know, we tend to over strengthen our front and we forget about our back. So, I mean, that's a simple exercise. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, getting up even just away from the chair and doing what we call the semi squats, uh, which is basically uh, not, not a deep knee bend, because again, if we have hip and knee issues, it becomes a major problem if we're if we're over exaggerating. Uh, more is not always better. So I always say a quarter squat, which is standing straight up, look down at your toes, Bend your knees until you lose sight of your toes. That's as far as you need to go. Hold it five to 10 seconds, five to 10 times. These two exercises, if you will, or these four exercises, however you want to look at them, they'll take you no more than five minutes to do. And again, you can get back to your, uh, your regular routine. That's wonderful. I know exactly what I'm going to do after this call now, actually. <laughs> uh, right before I go into my final question, uh, just trailing off that, can you give something specific for somebody with um, maybe some kind of chronic pain in their knees or anything that uh, maybe inhibits their mobility a little bit? Uh, knees, knees are quite common. I mean, uh, more so now than ever, I guess. Uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with uh, maybe not quite the right education depending on the, uh, the condition itself. Um, knees can be tricky at times because if they are what we call a soft tissue injury, uh, something related to the muscle, something related to a ligament, uh, we're not going to want to open or stretch that joint too much. General stretching of hamstrings and quads and calves are good for any injury. Uh, what we have to be careful about is uh, how we're loading that joint. Um, if it's, a, if it's a meniscus or a cartilage type injury, we don't want to compress it any more than what it is. So again, we have to be careful one way or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, for, again, to go back to, if we had a, uh, a muscle strain of, a, of a, a quadricep, for example, the muscles or a hamstring strain, which, which affects the knee. You know, um, light, light squats, as I just mentioned, quarter squats are good, some light walking, uh, Anything to do so um, that we're not, uh, like a lot of people would want to say, okay, you know, I've got some ankle weights at home. Can I use them? Depending on how sore it is, I'd probably stay away from the ankle weights because what that's doing, if you're sitting on a, on a chair and you're dangling your foot and it's got a weight on it, you're just pulling on that muscle that's already injured. Mm -hmm. So you want to sort of keep that muscle tight together and work it from there. If, uh, if it was a meniscus or a cartilage or something of those, a torn meniscus, torn cartilage, you'd want to do the opposite. You want to put those ankle weights on and you want to distract that joint a little bit. Uh, you can still go through the same motions, uh, having, you know, knee extension, leg curls and different things like that. Uh, I think that the key to it is, is just making sure you've identified 
why did I have the knee injury? Have, have somebody look at it. Uh, there are even, even now with this, this pandemic on, for example, there are a lot of uh, virtual programs, virtual care options out there. So if you don't feel comfortable or you don't, are not able to get to a clinic to have a physiotherapist or an athletic therapist look at you, I think it's important that at least make the call, discuss your symptoms, discuss what you've done, let them have a, a good shot at what, what they think they can help you with, and they can guide you pretty well. Uh, it's, it's important, as I said before, more is not better. Don't just go in and think I'm going to do a bunch of things and my knee is going to feel great. Uh, you, you, you always want to keep a good balance, if, if you will. Stretching, strengthening in, 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 uh, in coordination with one another, making sure that, like I say, you, you, you've had a, a good routine. A good routine that is, I mean, really a good routine should take no more than 15 to 20 minutes a day. So if you're in and you, you think, oh, I've got to spend 45 minutes to an hour just to keep my knee in, in good shape or my back or my shoulders, any of these things, you're probably doing a little too much. If you had that good routine in place, 15 to 20 minutes of, of light stretching, light strengthening to make sure that the, the muscles are just being taxed just enough would, would be a good program to, to maintain fitness and to even sort of help some of those little nagging aches and pains. That's excellent. And I'm just going to ask you one final question now, and then we'll wrap everything up. Mm -hmm. How do you personally promote positivity? How do I promote personally? Um, that's a, it's an interesting question, actually. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I guess I would promote it in, in, a, in a number of different ways. Uh, I, I think through, 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 as you mentioned before, through the mental capacity or mental health aspect of it is, I think uh, people have to sort of look at things in a, in a positive nature. I try to explain to people that, you know, um, as much as if it's an injury relation, for example, uh, you know, you, you can see that, yes, you're in aches and your pains, but you have that opportunity now to not just fix a problem, you have the opportunity to fix the, the initial pro the initial concern that, fed, that, that, cr that the problem uh, arise from. Uh, so you have to sort of, you know, peel back sometimes the layers of why people may be negative at whatever reason for, you know, first and foremost, and, and sort of show them that, you know, here you have a chance to start again, uh, physically, mentally, uh, professionally, I guess. I mean, I look at some things. Uh, unfortunately, I, I've, I've been in the business long enough to see a lot of everything, uh, some, some more so lately, some good staff members who have uh, left or, or have had to leave for one reason or another, and you deal with the, the, negative, connota the negative connotations that revert from that, but also from, from what you're left with. And, and for a lot of people, I think it's, it's an opportunity then to, to start over again in, into a small format and, and be able to sort of correct or make better what was there before. Even though it may have been good, there's that opportunity. So to me, I guess that's what it is, whether it be a, a physical injury or a, uh, a situation. Oh, Albert, that's absolutely fantastic. And uh, that's all the time we have today. So I want to say thank you so much for being a guest today. It was an absolute pleasure. You're always welcome back. I just want you to know. Absolutely. Anything, anytime. I appreciate the time. And